Hello, everybody. I am excited one more day to be alive and to get into the Word of God according to our sequence of study, which we are now in 2 Chronicles chapter 10. Father, we thank you today for your Word. Thank you for being our teacher. Help us to be students that are ready to hear what you have to say, to put the words hidden in our hearts so that we can express it by not sinning against what we learned today. Thank you for forgiving us of our sins and those things that we thought, even if we didn't do it, if it didn't line up with exactly what you said, then it is called sin. And we are asking that you continue to wash us and make us clean. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, I'm getting ready to eat out of chapter 10, but let me tell you something very exciting that God gave me about the queen of Sheba. The queen of Sheba heard about the wisdom of Solomon. Where did Solomon get that wisdom from? Solomon got that wisdom from God. The first time that they heard that Solomon had said something that no other king had ever done that we have recorded is when two women who were harlots or prostitutes both had babies and one of the mothers rolled over on her baby and the baby died. And she got up and got the baby of the alive she got the alive baby and exchanged her dead baby and she took the live baby. So the women got up and there was a dispute a bit between the two said, this is not my baby. And the lady said, yes, that is your baby. So it was a, you know, a big fight over or conversation of fight between the two women. And Solomon was the king and he heard about the dispute and they brought it to him and, and he solved that dispute by saying, bring me a sword and I'll just give you half and give you half. And then that settled the fact because the mama of the real, the real mother said, just let, let, just let her have it. And that word got around town. A difficult situation that made sense about, that came from a human being and people from everywhere wanted to hear the wisdom of Solomon. So when we think about that, we would probably say that would never happen. Well, I don't know. If you were a country that said, I'm going to settle this and I'm getting ready to kill this baby, then it would have happened. You get half and she get half. And that lady said, no, just go and let her have it. But whatever wisdom had Solomon got, it came from God. In fact, God put Solomon in a position that he was the smartest king or person on earth. At any university, Solomon would have been the best instructor. At any business, Solomon would have been the best businessman. Dealing with animals, he knew about trees, he knew about rocks, he knew about people. He understood life. God, if I may say, so that we can get the picture, put his mind in Solomon. God took his wisdom and he gave it to a human being whose name was Solomon and Solomon operated with the wisdom of God. People came from everywhere just to hear that type of wisdom because there was nobody on earth that was able to talk about things the way Solomon did and it was the truth. And people came with loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of things and gifts to give Solomon from gold to spices. There was no limit to what they brought and they didn't care if somebody else had brought before them. What I saw in that was Solomon was a human being with the mind of the father. He had so much wisdom until you could ask him anything, any hard question, anything that you thought was difficult, he could answer it. When people hear the word of God, they will travel from miles and miles to hear it. Solomon did not have what we have, which is the word of God, but he had 
Ask him anything. It didn't matter what you asked him. Even when God came to Solomon and said, what is it that I'm giving you, Solomon, to give me the wisdom to know how to lead people? And God said, you need a whole lot of wisdom. You need a lot of it. That's what you asked me for? Then I will give you my mind. And Because if you ask me to, for the know-how in order to, to lead people, then I'll give you my mind. If you And Solomon was sincere. He said, there's a lot of people out here. So you have to have a lot of wisdom to lead a lot of people because all wisdom is not one size fit all. There is no such thing as this will work all the time. You got different stages, different ages, different conditions, and you need to know how to deal with everybody. God gave Solomon the wisdom to lead people. And people need things. So Solomon knew how to deal with things. People knew, need feet, food. Solomon knew how everything there was to know about food. Everything there was to know about anything, Solomon knew it. Who wouldn't drive that far if you were sick and you went to somebody named Solomon and told him your condition and he told you what it took to get well and you walked away from that man well. Yes, the word got around that this man had the wisdom of God. So you think of it today, Solomon could answer it. Answer it. So the word got to the Queen Sheba and she heard about Solomon. She said, but I didn't believe it. So she went 1,500 miles to drive from where she was, if it was Africa or India, she came to where Solomon was. And it was a long time. And she brought loads and loads of stuff. Just because she knew she was going into the presence of the king, she brought a lot of people. Her entourage, they had a lot of stuff. When Sheba, Queen Sheba, spoke to Solomon, and the word said, and she asked him some hard questions. And the word says, 1 King chapter 10, he answered every last one of her questions. And she looked around and she saw all of Solomon's uh, waitresses and waiters and people that worked with him and all the food and all the stuff. And she said, what I heard on the street about you have, has not been told. He said, I heard it for myself. The half of what I heard has not been told. And what I believe God is saying today, this answers everything. And what we hear, I don't care how good it is, half what ain't been told. Half of what somebody can tell you about what's in this book has not been told. I'm talking about half of it. If Solomon had the wisdom of God and people travel everywhere, from everywhere to hear the wisdom that Solomon had, Solomon didn't have his. This is greater than Solomon. When I read this book, I can be in one chapter, and that's just one. And half of that chapter has not been told. This book contains everything there is about life. There is nothing that this book does not answer. And most times we find this book closed. God said you don't even have to travel to get it. He said, in fact, I'm going to give you a copy. If Sheba went 1,500 miles, to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And then Jesus comes and said, I'm going to give you something greater than Solomon. Here it is. And you, you don't have to do nothing but look at your watch. Look at your phone. Look at your, just look, just look online. And behold, I'm giving you everything. This book is greater than the wisdom that Solomon had. And it's accessible to anybody that open it. But it's so few people that read this book 
until if Sheba said half of what she heard had not been told, I can read, again, I can read one chapter and it'll tell me something that I'm 61 years old and I can't even say half that. Nobody has ever read that chapter. I talk to people today. This is the most irritating subject to talk about, but, but it's the best business plan that I've ever seen in my life. So when she was said half of it ain't been told, she was not mine. Half of this book, let alone has it been told, half of this book hadn't even been read. I can't even say a whole, I, I, I don't even, I, all I can say is what I hear that people stand up with the microphones. I don't listen. Now it's like, I got to see what this word says so I can see whether or not are we skipping through this book? Because if you, if one leader that has influence over God's people, and I can't even say if they're true because this guy that died told Jesus to tell my brother not to come in. Jesus said, they got prophets. He said, they not listen. If you can find one human being that'll read this book and read it right, one, that's major. I know my age, I haven't read the whole book yet. And I'm talking about read it right. I'm not talking about read it and make it fit my culture. Read it right so that everybody on earth can hear what it sounds like to be up under somebody who is not prejudiced, somebody who, somebody who does not try to get money out of people. Just read it because it's just life. It's not saying that it don't, it's not, it doesn't exist. It's just hard to find. People will hold up for their religion before they look at this book. Yeah, I know that right book. Yeah, I know that right book. This book is right without a book. It's just right. It is just right. So when, when Sheba said, y'all been talking about this man named King Solomon, you ain't told me half the story. That woman that went, it was at the well that Jesus said, I must need go to Samaria. And she went back and said, come see a man that told me everything ever I did. And they came to see. And when they got there and they got back, said, girl, you didn't tell us half of that. So all I'm saying is, I'm just on chapter 10, 2 Chronicles. And I haven't eaten anything today but chapter 10. And I'm going to eat chapter 11 when I get through. I don't know what chapter 11 talking about. But all day long, I, I, I've talked to several men today. I haven't, I'm going to be honest with you, in my life, I haven't seen not one human man that has read his word. I hear him fight about it. I hear, him, I hear him defend it. I said, but you don't read it. Because if you read this book, you would not be talking to me the way you talk. I see, I see, I have a brother that's reading the word. But I haven't seen, he's the only person that I know told me. He said, I'll read it. And now I slow down and go back and read it again. And it wasn't so much that, that what, what, what I learned about Solomon, Solomon is dead now. Based on where we go in the day, he's dead. Solomon had all that wisdom. But he didn't apply it. So I see people say, I read the word before. I just did, they just don't do it. I think that it's impossible to read this word every day and it doesn't, does not impact your life. I believe that this word, I know what it's doing for me. 
every day, I'm conscious of everything that I'm, I don't read fast. Because number one, I don't want to be misled and God knows I don't want to mislead anybody. I'm not in a hurry. I cry. When I look at this, when I see the things that God, when I read in the fourth chapter of Second Chronicles how this guy named H-U-R-A in Horam, or Horam, I can't pronounce the name. And he was a detailed um, uh, architect or some type of skilled person with uh, building. And when he built that basin, the sink, where the priest washed their hands, and I think that thing was 15 feet off the ground. And the details that he put up under that basin, it's like going up under your tub. And you paid attention to the details on, under the tub. Who does that? And then he had a 35-foot pole. And the details he had on the top of that pole. Well, you can't, I'm, I'm, I'm only 5'7". 35 feet tall. Who goes up there to see what's on the top of that pole? What did God tell me about that? He said, I, he said, I got a word that people ain't never seen before. I got a word under the word treasures, under, beneath, and I got treasures on high in this word. If only people would let me be God and let me talk. We go in there and we just look over some water in that basin. God said, look up under the basin. There's so much about Jesus, he said, that a book could not contain all about me, but get the part that I live, read it. You talking about a business plan in this book? You talking about it. And God did not leave this book to the church. He left this book to the world. He said, I love the world. So when I wrote about the government, I showed the government how to be ran. I showed the homes how to act. I showed the children how to behave. If we can... I, when I think about all these children being killed every day of somebody doing something, if the, if you would only give those children the word right, not not the religious part, then they would have something something to think about before they actually grow up to be men and be absent of the consequences of making bad choices. I would like to interview every young man if I could, if I could. Well, I don't have to do everything. If I go into our prison system and I talk to you as a man and tell me, where, where were you at sixth grade? What, what were you doing when, not, when the law was not looking at you? What were you being taught? What were, were you being taught? Because the decisions that you made was linked to that time you became about 12 years old, if not younger. It has everything to do with what you're doing now, maybe at 19, 20, 18, and about that age. If you can give a child 12 years old at least the word of God, I believe you can change the course of the whole kid's life. But our own government that God said, let me be over the government. He told Solomon, you are the king. You are higher than all the presidents, the lieutenants, the commanding over the army. You, you are the government. And the government told God to be quiet. And I'm not mad at the government because at the time when I was trying to speak in behalf to children about God, I'm glad God did shut me down because I had no idea what this word is. I was getting ready to talk religion. I was getting ready to talk crazy. But I can write you something out of this book that you would never knew I got out the word of God. That's just how absent-minded we are. I can tell you something about this word. I'm learning so much about this word I never heard of before. I can take the same word to the government and they will listen to me. The only thing they'll turn their back on if I say that I got it from the word of God. They did me like that all through school. When I learned to read this word, how did you get people to... I had a group of grown people and we were doing a black history program. 
I studied that whole staff for a whole year. By the time February, well, not quite the whole year. I got to know what everybody in that building could do. I went by and spoke to everybody as much as I could. Good morning, how you doing? So I was watching what they were doing. I didn't know I was doing that. But when it was time for me to present that program, I went to every teacher and said, I want you to bring that. Let's use that. I saw the gift in everybody I was working with and I brought them together. That program at Fountain Elementary School in Forest Park, Georgia, when they put that, when we got them putting that thing together, I got calls from different people in authority and said, how in the world did you, uh, how did you get grown people to work together like that? I didn't know why they were looking at me like it was something new. That's been over 20, 20 years ago. And I said, what do you mean? They said, we've never seen anybody that can take grown people and let them work together the way you did. I ain't think nothing of it. But I saw the wisdom of God because that's what I saw. People will come to you for ideas, witty ideas. How do you do things when you go in this book and you copy God's way of doing it? And they're going to come to you and ask you, how you do that? I wrote one math song, Dividing Fraction. You can look my name up. A math song. I laid across my bed. That's the Lord. The kids don't know how to divide a fraction. Help me teach her. Help me teach her. I wrote that one song. That song hit one weekend. If I would have just stopped doing what I'm doing now and focus on writing songs in math, I probably could be wealthy. And one song hit. And I can go in place and hear my own song singing. I never charge nobody die. They said, why you don't make money off of that? I don't know. When those teachers came together back there and they asked me, how did you get the people to do it? I got to know the people. That's all I did. I got to know what they did well. And there was not one, two people doing the same thing. Everybody that participated in that Black History program, I brought, one of them was an artist, one of them knew how to do African dance, one of them knew how to make, pro I saw the calligraphy and how to make programs look, ecstatic. I saw the gift of every teacher in that building, black, white, didn't care who they were. I saw something that you could bring to make this program come together and become like a glove. It took me time to get to know them. I just watched them every day. And I said, I can use that. And I really do believe that's God's plan for us. I believe that me and my granddaughter yesterday were dancing off the electric slide. I'm not electric slide. Or, uh, uh, some, some dance that tell you when to the left, to the left, to the right, to the right. And it was every color. I believe that's what Jesus said. It's going to look like the word already said there will be dancing in the street with the old and the young. Look it up. Google. I don't tell people where, where it's found. The one, number one right now, I can't tell you. I didn't know what's in there. Look up what Jesus said in the minor prophets that there will be dancing in the street with the boys and the girls and the old man on the cane. That's word. And I just, I just believe that who want to miss out watching Jesus do the electric slide? An organized damn. I believe that. I told my granddaughter, I told her, told her all this morning, you want to miss out on a party with Jesus and watching Jesus dance? <clears throat> that thing's organized. So Solomon was a man with all the wisdom of God instructing people, gave Solomon so many gifts. It wasn't about what so, people, look, Solomon had so much, so much wisdom until they brought him gold and he already had gold. People said, I don't care. He had that drawing power of the word of God. If we get the word of God in us and we really seriously stop playing games, Ask yourself, is God pleased with me and what I know about him? Because Jesus said, 
Ain't but a few people gonna find it. It's if you you just, people just number one don't want to read. They'd rather for you to read and tell them than to sit down and read for themselves. I'm gonna tell you like Sheba said. What I'm reading, the lady ain't lying. Half of it ain't been told. That means I've been on earth 61 years and half of what I know I ain't never heard before. I heard what kept us divided. I heard a lot of... I, I, I heard it, bits and pieces. But half of what I heard in 61 years has not been told. And I'm going to tell you now, and I got to get in this word in chapter 10. Singing uh, godly gospel songs is not going to save you. I don't care how famous your song hit the top 10. I don't care who you are. Most of the singers, most people that can sing do not know the word of God. I don't care how famous they are. Sit down and talk to them about the word of God. They're going to sound screwed up. And then they're going to talk. And what people do, they talk themselves out of studying the word of God because they feel like you're trying to judge me. You already been judged. You don't even know what you're talking about when you say that. I can't judge you, but the word can. It's already, this is a law book that's already proven what's right and what's wrong. I ain't got sense enough to tell nobody what's right or what's wrong, but I can tell you what the word said. When he said judge not, he was telling me, don't you use your, your understanding, but if I judge it, it's already been judged. Because he said, I told you, if you're in the household of faith, take my word and, and tell him I judged it. And you don't need a license to go out and teach the word and wait on somebody to give you permission to go. Jesus said, behold, I give it to you. You go into the world. I commission you. You don't need nobody to, to say you got to have somebody. You don't need all that religious stuff. You don't need a title to tell the truth. You don't need a title to see chaos in a building and go in there and straighten it out. You use God's word, go in there and straighten it out. This book is the light of the world. And I'm not talking about religious. This book will straighten out all these folk that shoot. And I'm not trying. I'm, this book will straighten out your finances. This book will straighten out everything there is to know about you. Everything that concerns life, how to set your business up. And you name this book, it's greater than Solomon. You say anything about life, this book answers it. But you might have to read in the details. You might have to go and know scriptures that's got all them names. And he begat, and he begat, and he begat, and he begat. Then it'll drop some nugget right there and say, do that. Couldn't nobody but God write a book like this. He hear that stuff just right. He put stuff in here just right because a wise man is going to investigate and they're going to go and see, did the word say that? It's the word said that. I talked to a man today. He's out there working in my yard. And I was telling him, I said, the thing that's going to divide us, and I ain't using no scriptures. I just told him the truth because I knew if I said scriptures, it was going to be an argument. I said, what's going to separate the right from the wrong. I said, you see how this man built my deck? I said, the way he built my deck is going to separate him from God's presence or with God's presence. Now, that ain't, now you're, trying to make, you're trying to make what makes sense in the, in the Bible. We don't want to agree on the Bible. I said, the, <laughs> the word did say that. But remember, we, 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 don't, we don't all agree on the Bible, but what you said makes sense. The man that built my deck half did it and didn't care but charged me enough money. I, I know better now how to, at least I hope and I pray and ask God, I said, Lord, give me, give me somebody that's going to do me right. I don't have money to throw away like that. But when I tried to tell him the word said it, I could have went all over that word with him with that, but he was arguing so much that I said the word said it until he wouldn't receive anything else, so I left it alone. But this is it. This book don't need, to know, don't need to know your pastor's name. It doesn't require to know what church you go to. It requires activation. It requires you to read it. 
He doesn't care who. God, what did, he said, let, he said, magnify my word and let your word be few. I, I, you ain't never heard me get online and talk about not one church and say, you go to this church. There, there's a church that teaches the word. Now, I do know that's Calvary Church. But I ain't never been. I just see them online. That Calvary Church, they teach that word. They, they're pretty good. I learned a lot from them. I don't promote them. Because they don't promote, promote themselves. They just tell you what, what to read. They just read chapter by chapter. And you'll find out like she was said, half is saying never been told. You do not take the word of God and do this. I mean, Hosea 3 and 5. That's not how to read the word. God said, well, he said, you got a book. How you read your book? He said, you read mine the same way. Oh, but that's the word of God. It's a book. And you read it the same way. You open up a page, page one, and you read it. He said, I don't know why. He said, how you build your house? Why do you think my house got to be built different? It's a book. The difference between my book and God's book, he ain't got no lies in there. Everything in here ain't sweet. Some things in here make you woof. He don't tell lies. Everything that he says is connected. How do you read it? It's a book. You don't read it like this. Lord, show me what you want me to read today. That's not how you read the word. He said, name one company that you can work for. You walk in there and just, I just, I just need to see what I'm going to do today. He said, name one. I am God. I am God. I don't have a special place that you can lock me up. I don't say things. What I say is in my word, but my word is a book that anybody that know how to read can read it. If you stop playing with it, just because you went in the back of the book and found, you, that's just like going in the pantry. I'm just looking for something to eat. I'm just looking for this. I'm just, I'm just, well, it's a lot of food in there. You know what you want? Then go, go in there and get it. If you know how to rightly divide it, but to, I, I would think if I was an instructor, if I was a king or queen, I'd just say my instruction to every baby being born. By the time he walk into school, he must know the word of God. He must have read, you must have taught this child by the time he get to be six years old. I need this child to know everything that this book is saying. It's just that easy. Then when he come in here, we're going to specialize in where it is that we're going to go back over it, which is going to be very healthy. But he's going to know how to not lie. He's going to know how to think. He's going to know how to turn. Let me tell y'all something. Even cleaning up. God has shown me how to clean up better. I take my time. I look at the whole. I wish that. I don't never. Hold on a minute. I take this phone. I look at the parts of it. I'm going to clean the head, the top, the bottom, the side, the front, the back, the inside, all this. Then I did this, then I know this part is clean. Then I clean this. Then I clean. So I want the whole thing clean now. I'm going to focus on cleaning on this side. Then I'm going to rub all on the back of this. Then I'm going to rub this part. Then I'm going to go up in there. I'm going to clean around here. I'm going to clean up around every, and after a while, you're going to have a clean phone. That's how you clean up. That's how you do the word. Wiping it is not cleaning it. But looking at how it's made and taking it loose and just laying hands on every part of it, you can say it's clean. Simple. I got the way I get that from when I saw that guy build that temple for, for Solomon, paying attention to detail. What does that make me better at what I do? When I sweep, I don't have to sweep the whole floor just to sweep. Just go in that corner, sweep. You ain't got to be in a hurry. That's if you want to clean. Now, if you want to look like it's clean, you just do it like, you know, just kind of rub the mop on the floor. But when you take your time and pay attention to what you're doing, you can actually say, I clean that thing. 
But people don't do that. Not for me. Not, not the way I see you mow the yard. I had a guy to mow me yard. I said, sir, I don't like my yard looking like that. He said, oh, you want them kind of people. I don't know what that means. I just know I want my yard like this. I need the edged. I need it all. I need, I need to see it looking like that. He said, you know what? That man told me he came back. He did that yard. Like I said, that man said, your one yard got me 10 other people to come by. The way I did, the way you wanted your yard. Ten, I got 10 other customers just because the way you want your yard. I ain't want the yard like I thought you were going to do it like that. Cause what I ask, I mean, I, I'm simple. How you more y'all know edge? You don't, you don't cut around the edges. That don't make no sense to me. But how do we read this word? Like it's a book. But the difference is who's the writer? It's not, the format is simple. Start in the beginning and watch God unfold his story. How can I get in chapter 10 if I don't know what chapter 9 I'm talking about? God has not called you to preach if you don't know how to read this book. Why? Why would he call you to preach if you don't know how to read? Now he did say go into the world and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And all. And, 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 I know all of that. But what I'm saying is the requirement is in order to know how to handle this book, you've got to know what this book is saying. But we'll go in one chapter and we would We'll say, I'm going to read Psalm 91 every day of my life. And I was like, oh, God, I couldn't be, my child couldn't be in your class. Because that would be crazy to me. It's just simply crazy to me. What's so rich about Psalm 91, the Psalm 90, Psalm, Psalm 89, all the rest of them? So what happened to them? Religion. When Jesus said, it's going to be a lot of people that say, I did this in your name. He said, I ain't talking about no hypocrite. He said, I'm not talking about hypocrites doing that. It might be a hypocrite, but I'm just saying. But what he said, it could be some real people that's going to think that they're going to stand. He said, but they're going to get so mad at me. Because I'm telling you, if I don't know you, I ain't going to lie to you. you. How do you get to know me? I sat down with you and I told you to come to me daily. Every day, our Father, give us this day our what? Daily bread. He said, I can give you this bread for one time in life. I said, I'm going to feed you daily. And then I told the children of Israel, come in the morning, and then before you lock in for the night, talk to me again. If you got kids, talk, talk about me all day long. What are you trying to tell your kids? You raising somebody on this earth, they need to hear me all the time. I wish I could start my life over. I, you know, where in the world I'd be in the position I'm in. But I'm glad I got a chance to see that this word all right, let's get into the word. So where we are now, chapter 9 ends, Solomon is dead. In Chronicles, it is the, the, the order of what happened. They don't tell you all the stuff that Solomon did. What you see is Solomon was very rich and he wasted a lot of time and money. It does not go into detail that he had a thousand or seven hundred. He had a lot of women. It does not go into detail that God says, Solomon, you know, mess my plan up so bad until I, I, finna, I got to break this thing up. The same man that was very rich crumbled the children of Israel so badly until God said, Jeroboam, come over here and let me give you ten of these tribes. And he left Solomon with one. You know, messed this thing up so bad. He said, but had it not been for David, I'd have taken that one from him. But I'm going to let you, I'm going to keep David because Solomon is David's son. Solomon got that thing. Solomon started out right. But Solomon got, Solomon, Solomon spent so much money on so much stuff until it was crazy. Gold forks, gold salt shakers, gold, uh, Pictures on the wall, gold toilet plate, the gold. Every the Bible says Saul, Saul was so rich until the, 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 the silver that he had, he considered them rocks, just like you see a penny on the ground. I that. But he had all that wisdom to know what to do, 
And then he walked away and disobeyed God and said, vanity. He slept with all the women. And no women wanted to sleep with him. Who girl, what's your husband name? My Solomon, that's my husband too. And my baby daddy. Solomon got this boy named Rehoboam. This is Solomon's son. This is, the, this is the word of God. You cannot get into chapter 10 without understanding chapter 9. And you don't have to be a rocket scientist to do this. You just, you just, you just can't. It ain't no way in the world you can open up the word of God and get in chapter 10 and feed nobody. Well, you could, you could take something out of it. Well, I ain't say you couldn't take something out of it after you know what you're talking about and then say, you know, well, let me encourage you because I read this. I met this guy in chapter 10 of Solomon. You can do that, yes. But we are responsible as believers to get to know the Father. Get to know the Son who's always been with the Father. And get to know the Spirit of God, who is the Holy Spirit, is in the book. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to shut your mama mouth up. It's going to shut your grandmama mouth up. It's going to shut your dad mouth up. It's going to shut your pastor's mouth up. Because this book was not written for certain people. This book was written for man. All right, verse chapter 10. I can, I can talk about this all day long. I just, I can, ooh, oh, God. I said, Lord, we don't know nothing. We are, I said, I've been trying to find, ooh. The only somebody that can tell me something is somebody that's got this book open. If, you, if you're talking out of your head, I don't want to hear you. That mean that. You mean to say you don't want to hear nothing about relationships? What you going to tell me? If, you, if the man, I got that, if I'm going to have a relationship with a man, he better sound like God. I want him to sound just, you know, people that, oh, I just love Boaz. You want to know who Boaz was? A man that spoke the word of God. I, when I read about Ruth and I saw Boaz, I didn't know that was Boaz talking. I thought that was, I thought that was God talking. I know what Boaz said that. I want somebody to sound just like that. Oh, you want somebody religious? Oh, no, you don't fool me like that. I watch how you treat people. Excuse me for a minute, what is it? Come and say hey to people. She's trying to get my attention. What is it? I'll be done in a minute. What you need? I just want to say hey. What's the hey then? Hey. <laughs> All right, now you said hey. All right. Go get, go get you another marshmallow till I get through. <laughs> you want another marshmallow? Okay, I'll be in a minute. Close me go back. And don't bother me. I'll be back. I don't even know what I was saying, but anyway. I have no idea what I was saying when she came and did that. All right, chapter chapter ten. Oh, I wouldn't talk to nobody that that don't have sense enough to read the Word of God. You want to argue, but you know what? You know the Lord do speak to me. I, I just do one verse. The Lord do speak to me. Okay, but well, then you go get you a job and you tell your your boss. If he hired you to do something, just say it. I just got my understanding. The Lord spoke to me and told me to just, just do it. Go, go on your job and see if it works. Hire somebody and they come to you and talk this spooky stuff. God said, I'm God. I'm God over the job. So if you can do it on your job, then how you, you can do it with my word? You make me look that, you make me look that foolish. Um, the Lord spoke to me and told me, uh, the curriculum say, you know, I, I know you're supposed to teach, you know, science like this and both teach math like that, but the Lord told me just go in there and teach, just told me to tell, teach children about five times five. See why they put you in a straight jacket. We do God's work like that every day. The Lord spoke to me, you're alive. You think the enemy playing? You better know that when he saw, if he didn't tell Jesus and say, if you the son of God, you could do this, he's still doing us like that. The Lord spoke to me and told me, you, you can't tell me that. I think you're crazy. How come God can be so sloppily read, but you got to pay close attention to keep your job? Because you know they said, they were... it, the book is made for man. You don't have to be born again. You can get born again and read the word. But this book is made for an unbeliever so that he can become a believer. 
but you might have, some, have to have somebody help you, and I understand that. But read it slow enough and get your dictionary and go online and see if somebody doesn't help you teach that. We don't have no excuse. But I wouldn't sit up under no ministry, not one. Will I, and I go to a church, but ain't nowhere in the world I go back to that church. I will volunteer to work with the kids before I sit there and let you play with my mind like that. Our topic today, the, 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 our topic today is Judas King. And I want you to look at you. I ain't even look at you like you playing with me. If I can read it, uh, if God can take the foolish things of this world and confound the wild, yeah, like I told my brother this morning, you want to know why? People have a hard time, if, if they do, receiving a word from certain people, and I won't just say me. It's because we don't look like what they thought we should look like in order to receive from them. You just don't look like nobody. You ain't got you. That Jesus said that's what. That's how they got me born. It got me the same way. I didn't come like they thought. He said, but if they had just heard what I said, they never would have hung me on the tree. We have pro, we program God's words and see we ought to know who look and what they ought to look like, sound like, talk like, and words like, and pronounce right. He said, you don't have to. You just be. Just let me be in you. And I'll do the same thing in you that I was in myself. And they'll treat you the same way. You don't look like you know nothing. You and people that's got all these, these big old churches that look down on you. He said, that's the same way they treated me. So get used to it. It's like that. But as long as you in the word. Parker. Parker. Excuse me for a minute. Parker. Come in and have a seat till I get done. Have a seat till I get done. What did I do? I want you to have a seat until I get done and don't say a word. I will cut this thing down. I will cut it off. Sit back. Sit back and don't say anything. I'm Oh, your dad in there? Yeah, I'm Okay, well then why, excuse me y'all, why is she making this much noise? I don't know, go, go ahead. Your dad, I know your dad was in there. I'm sorry. Don't run, Parker. Sorry, y'all. Anyway, what are we doing? Let's get in the word. So just in case you are going to a place where people slice the scripture out there and give you that. I get, maybe we start off like that, but God said I ain't playing like that no more. Time to play ball. Let's let's play let's play right. I, I can't even tell you. All I can say is God's side. I just, it just, it's, it's, if it's somebody showing you something better, then let's go. Let's, let's, let's learn how to read the word. So just in case that person that goes in there and pull their scripture out of there and they're very good speakers and they know how to wrap that thing up. And it makes sense. I ain't gonna say it don't make sense. But if you go in the word and read for yourself and just in case they're not there, at least you can continue the story. Everybody ought to read the word where it'll get you where you go back behind them and keep going or go back and search everything. I'm just saying. That's, I mean, on, if I was over the math department at school, you're going to have to, if I walk in there and you teach, it, sh it should be hooked up based on what I know the curriculum says by the State Department. Week now, you ought to be here. Week two, this week, you ought to be here. So you just don't walk into a business and start a business because you got to. I just felt like I ought to do that. You don't stay in bed long. People gonna start noticing that you. I, I ain't gonna open up at ten. I believe I'm gonna open up at. Anyway, that story me too deep. The word of God is business. It's a curriculum. It's easy to learn. The difference is you are talking and hearing from God. But the order, the pages, are still out of books with you know the same letters that you have to go to school and learn A B C D E F G. The same sentence structure is that it's the only thing that's different is you are talking to God and God gave us a copy of something that we can read in every language. It's not spooky. It's not, it's a book. All I can say is let's get it in chapter 10 and read it because I need to see about my granddaughter because she's about to get in a lot of trouble. All right. Uh, Solomon is dead. 
David had a son named Solomon. David died. God raised Solomon up to take David's place. Solomon started out right. Solomon got caught. He got his eyes off God. If I get my eyes off the word, I'll be doing stuff just like anybody else that don't read the word. No difference. You don't read the word, you're going to sound like people who don't read the word. Well, I read sometimes. Well, you sound like you read it sometimes. Well, I'm on a diet sometimes. Well, you look like you're on a diet sometimes. Whatever we do, well, I take a bath sometimes. You smell like, I ain't trying to be rude. I'm just trying to say we got to stop. Whatever you do sometimes, that's what it look like. You sound, I don't care how you sound to yourself, you deceive yourself. If you have read this word, you sound like you have read it. But because most people don't read it, they bow down to people who don't read it too. Blind, leading. How you gonna put a blind man in, in charge every day? All right, let's, let's meet this guy named Rehoboam. Then Rehoboam, Solomon's son, is the next one in line to take the leadership. Then Rehoboam went to Shechem. For all of Israel, everybody in Israel had gone to Shechem to make him king. David is dead. Rehoboam, Rehoboam is next. And so they went to the courthouse downtown and made him king. When, Jehovah, when Jehovah's son of Nebat, when Je, I mean Jeroboam, I'm sorry. When Jeroboam, son of Nebat, heard about it, because Jeroboam ran and got out of town because God had said, come here, Jeroboam. I'm getting ready to split this kingdom up. I'm going to give you 10 pieces of it, and I'm going to leave David with one because the Levites didn't count. I know people start saying all kind of stuff, but anyway, that's what the word said. So Jeroboam got word that he was getting ready to get some, get some power around that, and then Solomon got mad and got ready to kill Jeroboam, and Jeroboam took off and went to Egypt. But then he heard that now Rehoboam is king. So Jeroboam come back downtown. Jeroboam left Egypt and came back. Who was Jeroboam? An architect, a guy that worked for Solomon and knew what he was doing, doing a good job, was an overseer over other people. And God saw how faithful he was and what he did. He said, you know, come here, Jeroboam, I'm going to use you. I'm going to split this kingdom up. I'm going to give you 10. I'm going to leave David with one. Because if it had not been... For David, I done knocked this whole thing off. And then the prophet told Jeroboam, said, if you just follow God, he said he'll leave you with somebody on the throne. But let's see what happened to, to, to Jeroboam. Jeroboam is, is connected to us today. I'll tell you how. So when Jeroboam, son of Nebat, heard that Rehoboam is now king, for he was in Egypt where he had fled from King Solomon's presence, you know, he, he said, I had to get out of here. Something trying to kill me. I saw him lost his mind. Pretty much. Jeroboam came back, returned from Egypt. So they summoned him. They said, Jeroboam, we're going to go talk to um, Rehoboam. Then Jeroboam and all Israel <clears throat> came and spoke to Rehoboam. Who is Rehoboam? Solomon's son. Hey, Rehoboam, this this Jeroboam, we, 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 can we can we come can we meet with you today? Thank you, sir. Jeroboam returned from Egypt. Then they summoned him. Then Jeroboam and all the Israel came and spoke to Rehoboam. So Rehoboam said, "Y'all come on in. Y'all come on in my office." I'm just trying to make it make sense. They said, "Uh, Rehoboam, your daddy, Solomon." Made our yoke hard. You get your daddy made us work like crazy. He made our yoke hard. Our, the hard work we did, we 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 couldn't. We we got to the point. We we talked more about him behind his back. We don't want to do that. We we we, we godly people. Therefore, like your father's hard service and and the heavy yoke he put on us, and we'll serve you. Just we we'll, we'll serve you. This Jeroboam talk with all the people that's following him. Came in the with it. Said, say, say, Rehoboam, if only you would just slack up on all the rules and, and all the stuff that you got us doing, taking our money and, 
And then we working for all them wives that you got building that wife a house and doing that for that wife. We left our family to come and work for your daddy, Solomon. Did we try to take care of all them women he had? And did we, we, can you just give us a break since your daddy did? We just want to start over. Rehoboam replied, he said, return to me in three days. So the people left this, all right? Now go back in the first king, it's going to give you more details. Chronicles don't give you all the details. So Rehoboam replied, return to me in three days. So the people left. Then Rehoboam consulted with the older or elders who had attended to his father, Solomon, when he was alive, asking, how do you advise me to respond to these people? They said they don't want to, they don't want to work the way they did. My daddy gave them a hard time. He said, y'all y'all worked up under my dad, right? He said, how do you think I would tell them? I told him, come back in three days. They said, well, brother Rehoboam, what you need to do, if you, if you would just be kind to the people and please them by speaking kind words to them, they'll be your servant forever. If you just only treat them nice, treat them right. It would, it would the elders people told him. said, yeah, we saw your dad did that. He said, but let me tell you something. Treat these people right. Treat them right. Don't, don't, don't take advantage of them. But Rehoboam, Rehoboam, but he rejected the advice of the elders who had advised him. And he consulted with the young men who had grown up with him, the ones attending him. And he, oh, you want to run out with your buddies. So Rehoboam said, you know what, what y'all think about this? Man, I ain't thinking about them blank, the blank, the blank, blank, blank. You better, you better, they must don't know who you are. This is what the young guys told him, his own folk that he hung around with. That attended to him, that washed his cars, that did his barbershop stuff, whatever they did. Man, you want a hamburger? Those are the people that he said, What y'all think? He asked them, What message do you advise me to send back to these people who said to me, Lighten the yoke of, of your daddy, that he, what he put on us? Then the young men who had grown up with him told him, This is what you should say to the people who said to you, Your daddy made your yoke heavy, but you make it lighter on us. He said, your father made our yoke heavy, but you make it light on us. So he was telling his, his friends what these folk came in to tell him to change. This is what you should say to them. My little finger is thicker than your daddy's waist. He said, look, boy, what my daddy did to you look like this compared to my waistline. If you think this hurt, imagine if you got a big old waist like mine. If you think my daddy was bad with the little, little, bit, little stick that he had, I'm going to beat you down with a tree trunk. This is what you should say to them. My little finger is thicker than my father's waist. Now, therefore, my father burdened you with a heavy yoke, but I will add to your yoke. My father disciplined you with whips, but I'm going to put barbed wires on it. I'm going to whoop you and stick, uh, I'm gonna stick something and snatch the skin off of you. This is what Solomon's son told the people that Solomon was once king over. If you don't like my daddy, you ain't going to be able to stand me. So Jeroboam and all the people came back in the three days, just as the king had ordered, saying, okay, what you, what's your advice? What you going what, what, what to you gonna, you, you gonna be nicer to us? Return, you told us to return to me on the third day. Then the king answered them harshly. King Rehoboam rejected the elders' advice, the older people, and spoke to them according to the young man's advice, saying, My father made you yoke your yoke heavy, but I will add to it. My father disciplined you with whips, but I will barb wire. Barb whips. The king did not listen to the people because they turned, the king did not listen to the people because the turn of events came from God. God said, I already knew they were going to do that. That's why I told Jeroboam, I want you to go and take this 10. That's why I already had it set up. He said, I knew Rehoboam was going to do that. So I already had Jeroboam to go and take the 10 and go on back. And I'm going to deal with Judah. I'm going to deal with this. this I'm going to deal with this boy. He can't handle all this because he's been that crazy. So you take the 10 tribes and go on. So God already knew how it was going to play out in order that the Lord might carry out his word that he had spoken through a higher the Shalonite of Jeroboam, son of Nebat. In other words, he sent a prophet and told, told Jeroboam, said, you know, God going to give you this kingdom. I'm going to give you ten because you were pretty good in the architect's stuff. When all Israel saw that the king had not listened to them, the people answered the king, what? You, what? what poison do we have in David? In other words, 
We've already been split up before. Now we're all together and we want to stay together. But you going you gonna to act like that? You going to talk to them like that? You going to think, who you think, who, 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 you, who, who, you, who you think you talk to? Rehobo? We have no inheritance in the son of Jesse. We already been split up. And now we can, what please? Israel, each of you, he said, Israel, let's go home. You're talking to all the children of Israel. Eat to your tent. Goodbye. David, look out of your own household now. Go on, Rehoboam. Just go on and have David. You ain't, we ain't think about you. You can keep David out. We got the rest of this. So all Israel went to their tents. But as for the Israelites living in the city of Judah, Rehoboam remained or reigned over them. So now the kingdom is split. Ten to one. I heard somebody come in my door. Then King, then King Rehoboam sent Hadaram, the tax collector, who was in charge of the forced labor. But the Israelites stole the Israelites stoned him to death. They said, Oh, you came, you, 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 you came over here with Rehoboam. Oh man, you must be out your mind. Kill him. So he sent this guy over there to get the forced labor and collect money, and he they killed that boy. And King Rehoboam managed to get into his chari chariot to flee to Jerusalem, back home. He said, to this day, Israel is in rebellion against the house of David until this day. That's all I read. That's just about this boy that became king. Didn't want to listen to the folk that used to be up on his daddy and say, oh, you ain't like my daddy, you ain't going to like me. And he sent this guy over there to get some money, thinking them folk were playing. They killed that boy and said, next. And he ran back to the house. That's the whole story of chapter 10. Where we get religion from. Anyway. So after that, the kingdom getting ready to be in a mess. We got Jeroboam with the ten tribes. And you talking about a mess. All right, we got to look at chapter 11 to see what's going on. But I would encourage you to read the word because it's just this simple. It is a book. God made it simple enough for a child to read it. You can get it in any version. Just be careful that, uh, that somebody just not trying to write a version to make money, make sure they took the time to make sure they tried to interpret it in a way where it flows right. But anyway, that's the end of the book. And if I were you, I would read for myself because guess what? The half ain't never been told love y'all by.